Hey everybody, it's Norm from Test In. And it's Jeremy from Test In. Welcome back to Projections, where for the past couple weeks we've had a lot of hardware coverage uh, on the show, but we're gonna talk about games today, experience today, and especially... Star Wars. Star Wars. We were able to get access and play through Vader Immortal, which is uh, launching as a launch title on the Oculus Quest. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on the Rift, and it, it's a co-development between ILM X Lab and Oculus Studios. We saw a glimpse of it at Star Wars Celebration. I almost am fearful of doing this because Star Wars is one of those, you know, games, experiences that a lot of people don't want any spoilers for. So be warned, like if you want to go in fresh, uh, maybe mute the audio or maybe skip this part of the video. Because this is this is very much a story driven experience. This is yeah. not this is not a game. This is even if it were a game, maybe you wouldn't want to spoil, but this is very much in the vein of like a location-based experience. This is something that you go in as a character and you become a part of, uh, of a storyline. And I think that's the hard sell for this because the quest is being sold to gamers and to Star Wars fans and even the creators of Vader Immortal, the writer David S. Goyer and the folks at Island X Lab have struggled with ways to describe this. So we'll do our best, spoiler free, yeah. to give you a sense of what it is first. It's a first of a three-part story um, about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how long it takes for you to complete it. Oh my gosh, it. I would say 40. I mean, maybe. I, you could probably rush through it in 30. Yes, uh, and three parts, $10 for at least the first version, or the second parts episodically coming out uh, later this year. And uh, like you said, the closest thing to describe it is not necessarily a video game like Jedi Knight right. or Jedi Outcast, but and, and not necessarily like a movie or a... Because it is interactive. Because it it's almost like The Void, uh, Secrets of the Empire. Yeah, yeah, it very much is, that's the closest approximation I have. It's not a play because it's not a passive experience. Uh, it's not, it, it has gameplay elements. Um, the interactivity models that are included are actually ones that I'm really thankful to see because there's no other launch titles that I've played that have some of these on the quest and, mm -hmm. I, and knowing that this is going to be a lot of people's first VR experience yep. I want them to see things like climbing for instance that's one thing that you can do in this and I think that they do a, a really smart thing which is they have some variance in what they allow you to toggle whether or not you're comfortable with falling or if you need like a safe fall um, whether or not you want to be able to move smoothly through the world with pushing the stick forward and actually floating through smooth locomotion or acceleration if or if you'd rather do a teleportation model they have that too so right. they've given you a lot of options and I think they default to the more comfortable settings yes. but you can go into the settings and uh, switch it up and you can do some pretty intense experiences now unlike the void it's not fully tactile like your house and your play space isn't gonna have the walls and you do teleport as opposed to physically walking uh, but it is a journey and you know it's called Vader Immortal so expect Vader to be there in some capacity mm -hmm. um, and uh, we can say we really liked it no I definitely I mean this and I'm you know not biggest fan in the world of the more recent Star Wars films this is very much in the vein obviously it has Vader of the classic Star Wars environment you do some things that we've always wanted to do in Star Wars games particularly in VR for the past three years you finally get to do some things that are uh, worth the ten dollar entry fee and honestly like an LBE costs more than that right yes. and this experience much shorter yes and this does have some replayability there's a certain mode that you can go back into which is more of an arcade experience which you you can go back and play as many times as you want and get better at mm -hmm. yep yep so definitely some replayability I think you're gonna get a lot of mileage out of that ten dollars yeah. here and thus ends the spoiler free portion can we just say that the, this review the graphics I oh, yeah, think, okay yeah oh I mean that's probably not spoiler free yeah. I mean yeah it's really really impressive like this mobile processor can do some things that I did not expect and this is a launch title this makes me very very excited for the future I think we had minor different opinions I think compared okay. to go Absolutely. Yeah. If you're talking about the, the games you played on Go, the, the roller coaster games, some of the the, the, the more you know uh, uh, rail-based shooters that you had on there, right. this is blows that away. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if you're used to desktop gaming experience, I don't think they diminish the interaction model for the mobile side. It definitely, like I've described in the past, feels like turning all this graphic settings down on a desktop PC side. The textures look a little fuzzier. If you walk right up to the walls, you're right, you can see them degrade. Yeah, I, I definitely playing this 
I want to play it again on the Rift version and mm -hmm. play it with full graphics. I think they did a lot of great things with the lighting effects here, a lot of great things with the animation here that compensate for not being able to push all those pixels. Uh, but the, the experience is there and it is it does feel like a full game. It doesn't feel like I'm gated. And I think they did a really, like your right. big environments, small environments, yeah. the atmosphere is really there. And all of the mechanics are 100% there. They don't, they're don't. they not degraded by the graphics at all. And to the extent that the graphics are compromised, we'll see once we see the PC title. But I was really, really surprised. I never expected this level of fidelity on a mobile processor. Stereo, 72 hertz. I mean, this is, this is high-tech stuff. And like I said, if this is what people are able to do at launch, the next year bodes very, very well. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. I still equate it somewhere between PS2 and PS3 graphics. Yeah, hopefully we'll get more close to the PS3 as it goes on. Okay, spoilers aplenty moving really? forward. Yes, let's do it. <sighs> okay, <laughs> so it is, uh, you are a smuggler. You're on a ship. Right. And the big thing with this game is you have a, a robot companion. Played by Maya Rudolph. Yes. To great effect. And this is definitely, she definitely crosses in this lapstick territory. It is a combination of the relationship that K2SO has yes. with Cassian Andor in Rogue One, Lando uh, with, uh, with L3 in, in Solo. Yeah. You have your robot buddy. Mm -hmm. She's full of personality, fully animated. And having that robot Got, go through this journey with you, I right. felt like was their biggest breakthrough. Kind of ribbing you a little bit here and there, and then she gets hurt. And, yeah. and like in the first five minutes, and I was I was already compassionate about it. I, yeah. I didn't want them to do that to my robot buddy. Yeah. Like it actually, it was successful in that sense. And thankfully she's not permanently hurt. But <laughs> uh, a great, great, great part of this. You had said that you feel like the NPCs in this are some of the best that you've seen in VR for the past three years. I think VR has been lacking in this regard. Um, there are only a few VR experiences where I feel like the, inter the, the animation, yeah. the dialogue of the NPCs really feeling engaging. Um, I feel like Valve has done a great job with, you know, with the Aperture stuff, uh, with the robot repair, even the Steam VR tutorial, a lot of personality in those robots. Right. I think Lone Echo did a fantastic job of having an NPC that I really empathized with, that, that was living in that world in the yeah. same space. Here, exactly the same. The NPC having Zoe, Zoe 3, the name of my Rudolph's character, go along with you in the journey as you're sneaking through Mustafar. Mm -hmm. um, there was a moment in the game, in the story, where you're peering through some grates and you're watching Lord Vader have a conversation and go through something emotional. And and, and it's scary because you're, you're kind of peering into Vader's world. You're spying on Vader. You're spying on Vader. And there's a moment something happens and I instinctively turn to look at the NPC <laughs> and I saw the NPC was turning to look at me as if yeah. like acknowledging right. This is kind of real. They do a good job of following your head movements. It's not, like especially in VR, they have to do things that you can't necessarily do in flat screen games, which is actually track your head movements because you might be able to move in a cutscene where they yeah. don't anticipate. They do a great job of maintaining eye contact and keeping you in the game world. Um, on that note, if you actually do venture too far out of their game world, even if you're within Guardian, it goes to black, it says, go back, you're breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. That's how they solve that problem. Right, they keep it funneled through the story. Right. Uh, it is like the most amazing Disney ride ever. Right, it's Disney Whoa, attraction. Oh, easy now. Well, in, the, in that you're in this, you're on this planet. Yeah. Right. You are go. You are on a. Sh you start off on a ship. You get captured by the, the Empire. Right. You see a star destroyer come above you. Yeah. You're you're then brought into the hangar. The stormtroopers come aboard. Right. They put you in the prison. You're interrogated by Vader himself. They get up close to you. Even the stormtroopers when they first came on, I was like, I was like standing at attention. Yeah, you're, you know? you're holding your hands yeah. up. Because that's one of those things. Like in VR, this is a new, totally different experience than in Jedi. Night. Like it's, you're playing along. Yes, you are standing next to a stormtrooper who is armed, and mm -hmm. they're suddenly much more intimidating than they are on the movie screen. Yeah. Now you mentioned interaction models, yeah. and there are a lot of things to interact with. I wouldn't call them puzzles, but they prompt you to move the story along by unlocking this door, and that all that 
requires is taking your your spanner yeah. and and you know twisting the knob a little bit, pulling out something, and everything's color cues. Just grab the object that's red and pull some levers, and it animates well. That will then unlock the door and move you on to the next chapter. Yeah, if you think too deeply on this, the way that you bypass security on Empire Space Stations is a little weak. Yeah. Uh, but don't think too hard on it. Don't think too hard <laughs> on it. And then your spanner gets holstered to your right. I did like what they did with the the, the hand representation. You have your floating hand gloves. Right. You don't see your body, mm -hmm. but they did some snapping to it. So it's very context sensitive. If you move the spanner to a certain place, it will lock in. So you right. don't, not every movement has to be precise. And this is used to great effect in the combat. So one of the great things they do, one of the big fan servicey things they do, is they give you a lightsaber. Fan and, service. Well, it, you know, wish fulfillment. Yes, don't we all? Don't yes, we all absolutely. want a lightsaber? I mean, that's something that we, like, isn't it amazing to think that we have not had an official Star Wars licensed lightsaber game in VR yeah. yet? Yeah. Until now. Well, it's tough to do, because you think about a lightsaber, you want to be able to cut through everything, but you have no real haptic feedback. Right. So how do you have a lightsaber block another lightsaber, and how and how do you make that effective and convincing right. and not break the rules of, yeah. of Star Wars? And when you get your lightsaber, you go through a training regimen uh -huh. in Vader's dojo, which is very akin to the Force AR system we play with Lenovo's. The Jedi Challenges. Jedi Challenges. Yeah, where so that, that's an AR game. You put your phone in the device, and you play through, um, basically, you, you have a lightsaber, and you have to place it in these ghosted out spots in the real world. Mm -hmm. And you have to do it in time to block the incoming battle. And that, that's basically what the droid teaches you to do. Of course, now you're in VR, which means everything's crystal clear. There's no drift. It yep. feels right. And that ghosting, thankfully, is not a part of the actual combat. It's just in the training. Yeah. So it teaches you that you know to engage with the enemy robots, you just gotta hold your lightsaber and block it. And it actually became quite challenging. The robots, the animations are so good yeah. that you gotta really watch where they're swinging to right. deflect in a certain way. It's not entirely clear where they're gonna be coming from. You can sort of get the gist of what direction, but yeah. the movements are so complicated that you'll get hit. And I was really, really happy by that. Because uh, it be, it was like, oh, okay, I gotta try harder. And I can get this, and then you feel like you messed up, and then you get in the zone of it, and you start to feel like a bit of a Jedi. It is rewarding. Yeah. It's rewarding with the robots. Now you can't die, your screen turns red a little bit. Can you die? Because I don't die. I didn't think you could either. No. Like there's blaster fire later. Unfortunately, you never get a blaster. I think that's an interesting choice on their part. Uh it's an it's easy to give somebody a gun. It's a lot harder to teach somebody to use, um, you know, a lightsaber to, defensively as well as on attack. Yes. That's beside the point, though. Um, yeah, I I did feel like there was a great sense of of skill as I got better and better at the game. ILM had previously experimented with um, VR in one of their their Tatooine their, yeah. uh, little mini game when you had the same lightsaber element where you would deflect the blaster and they have that same gameplay yeah. uh, element here where the stormtroopers are firing at you, droids are firing at you, and you gotta swipe back at a certain time and it is super rewarding. Uh, with the combat, they do a little bit of the snapping as well. You can have two hands on the lightsaber. Mm. One hand's more comfortable because you're actually didn't holding a yeah. uh, lightsaber. You can hold it in either hand. But when you get to a certain point, you, like if the lightsaber is pushing against you, your, anima your hand does push back a little bit okay. in the animation. But not enough to be uncomfortable or strange. Exactly. And exactly. you finally get to battle the training bot from Star Wars Episode yeah. Four, yeah. which is great. Like yeah. I've wanted that since, I mean, I even asked the, the Jedi Challenges guys, when is that coming? And they didn't say, but I almost feel like they knew that this was in the works or something was because they they said, well, we can't. Not, not only do you have to fight the, the training droids, there are, there's a whole training mode. This is where the replayability comes in. You yeah. can finish the story and you load up the dojo and it's almost like a combination of Fruit Ninja and Space Pirate Trainer. It starts off with the droid just popping up and you slice them in half and you do it quickly, you get your highest score and you have health here so you don't want to get shot. Mm. And as you progress, more of these droids fly up and they fly around you mm -hmm. and it really takes advantage of the quest where it's 360. Yeah. You're not just getting shot at from a droid that's over there, but also back there. So you're you're in a you know full Jedi stance and deflecting and, and bouncing their blaster fire back. It's not easy. I got it to stage four and five and was dying pretty pretty frequently. I love that that mode's in there because that is that's really 100% game. And what I wanted more from the main experience, the main campaign, was more of a game. And I think the way we've described it so far, it might sound like a game, like a short yeah. game, but it really isn't. The fact that you can't die takes away a lot of the, you know, the stakes, risk. the stakes, the risk. 
and it's a lot of, of storytelling. And on the one hand, that's great because this is Star Wars that's kind of interactive and I, and I dig it and it's well worth the $10, but it just made me crave Jedi Knight VR way more than I have ever had that craving. I want blaster fire and sword fighting the whole way along with a story, but I want those gameplay mechanics to come to the fore and have a game that is, you know, a $40 experience that I can buy 50 and I will play for 10 hours. And if you're a fan of Star Wars, it dives into the lore and some great callbacks to, you know, Vader's past history. You get to see a side of him, a vulnerable side of him that you don't really get to see. Dude, that, there's some stuff in here that, that makes me like the, uh, the prequels a little bit. Oh, <laughs> nice, yeah, 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 yeah. Won't give that part away. Right. Um, and they add to the mythology. You're on Mustafar and you learn about the history of that world. Uh, we'd be risk not to mention there's one segment where you are told the history of the planet and it's told in quill. It's a quill animation. That is going to be, that's, that was a great surprise for someone who follows VR. I was like, that's super clever. And I love the aesthetic change for that moment. I think for yeah. most people, it's just going to be kind of a nice shift. But if you follow VR and you recognize that as a quill animation, I don't know who they got to make that, but I'm sure it's somebody who. It's in the credits. You get well, the full Star Wars credits. Dude, the list of people who worked on this, yeah. they spent a fortune making this experience. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's as far as we'll go. We won't, won't go into the full story. It made me want to play more. It felt cinematic. It felt like you were in the Star Wars world. And, and like we said, it was wishful fulfillment in many ways. It was. Yeah. There, now, months ago, I went to GDC, and there was a game that I got to play there that I couldn't talk about. It's called Battle Wake. It's by Servios. And we were finally uh, given permission to start talking about it this week. You might have seen the trailer hit the web. Uh, and it's a really interesting game. Now, Servios, we know them from Raw Data and Sprint, Sprint Vector. Vector. They do some things, oh, and of course Creed, also on, on the Quest. They do some things with interaction that I really respect. They're constantly switching it up. They're trying different things. Trying things with locomotion. They're really proud of their IK models, putting your full body, whether it's in boxing or racing yeah. or, or uh, combat, um, into the VR space. Uh, here, your body, though, is a little different because you're on a pirate ship. You are sort of captain of a ship, but you're captain in this fantasy kind of way where you have almost this kinetic relationship to the ship and you can will it to do your different things. And while it is multiplayer, it's not multiplayer but aboard your ship. You are essentially the ship. And you cruise through the open seas and it's basically a death match. It's, it's various multiplayer modes where you're firing off of the, the front of the ship or the sides based on where you point your hand. So you point forward and you pull the trigger sides and different guns happen based on the direction that you're pointing and what you're pointing at. You can build up your superpowers. And it's, I actually had a great time. The game is very good looking. The uh, devices that it's gonna launch on are to be announced. So a lot of people are wondering, is this gonna hit the quest to be announced? It's really good looking, so I would temper your hopes about that. But in any case, when it hits PC VR at the very least, you're gonna look forward to, to checking this one out. I got to talk to the CEO of Servios, James Iliff, back at GDC, and here's what he had to say about the game. Jeremy from Tested here at GDC 2019. I'm talking to James Iliff, co-founder of Servios. I just got to play a new Servios game, and it's yeah. called Battle Wake, yeah. right? Uh, Give me the elevator pitch. What is Battle Wake? So this is our big pirate seafaring adventure on the open seas. Um, this is a big pirate combat kind of game. So you can play as four different pirate lords. You have 20 different weapons. You have a bunch of different types of ships. There's a lot of ways to play this game. There's PvP, PvE. There's a big sweeping campaign, over 20 parts. Um, there's also powers and ultimates. So you can unleash a kraken. You can have a giant maelstrom come down with a whirlpool and take a bunch of fleets of ships out. Um, you could shoot giant waves and tsunamis. There's a whole bunch of powers and ultimates in this game that take it one step beyond just a standard pirate experience. This is uh, bringing into the realm of fantasy almost. So I can't do all of those things, right? I have to pick and choose. Like when I start the game out, I, I had two characters I could choose from. Are you yeah. expanding that to more characters? Or yes. is that there's going to be four total pirate lords in the game, and they all have different unique abilities and attributes, and they also have different ships and stuff as well. And each ship has... Um, forward weapons, aft weapons, and broadsides. So that's based on where I aim. So if I'm looking yeah. straight ahead I, and I pull the trigger, I've got that weapon. Yep. If I move my hands to the side, it's that one rear. And exactly. I can fire two at once, depending yeah. on where I'm throwing my hand. Yeah, you can, you can aim, do yeah. two broadsides at once. You could do a back mortar and shoot forward machine guns or shoot broadsides and flame cannons or 
however combination while you're going, it's probably good to have one hand on the wheel, but you can take them off the wheel and just go full bore if you want to and take out a whole fleet. I found myself using what you call the anchors all the time, which yeah. I, I think of as emergency brakes. Like it I could is. throw and do these sharp turns, yeah. super handy for avoiding icebergs and even other ships. Uh, but sometimes I don't want to avoid the ships, right? Like it can, you can ram right into them. If you, if you get a ramming upgrade, and there's a ton of upgrades in this game, like it's insane. But if you get a ramming upgrade, you can plow right through ships, and if you combine it with a, with a speed boost power up, you can completely take out a whole fleet. And what's great about the anchors, you know, you can pull them all the way up on your right or on your left, and it'll do a hard bank. So you're literally dropping anchor and doing a really tight turn based on where that anchor point is, and so you could do a quick flip and just completely destroy ships with your broadsides if you need to get a quick turn in. It's also good for dodging mortars and different types of attacks like that. So yeah, tell me about, are there defensive uh, power-ups that I can eventually get? Is there a, like a rock, paper, scissors style to picking the right weapon to versus the, the correct weapon, that kind of thing? Yeah, so after completing a, a each objective in each mission, there there's a little thing that pops up that gives you th three different choices, and it's somewhat proceduralized. But you can choose to upgrade your health, your armor. You can do different weapon upgrades. You can do weapon swaps. Um, and a lot of it's related to different stats for each weapon type and upgrade type. So I know you're planning to have up to 10 people in a single round. And yeah. those will be either deathmatch or also cooperative where two ships can be working together on the same team. Is that right? That's right. That's right. So our main campaign mode, that can be cooperative. Um, we also have uh, two other modes. One is PvP only. That's our plunder mode where you can have all out battles with many, many players. Um, and then we have our warfare mode, which is you can have up to 10 players playing together and fighting through proceduralized battle environments. So the co-op um, campaign, is that just two players? You can do more than two. Uh, we haven't set a limit on it yet, but we're still working on it, figuring out the right performance for it. Uh, cool. One of the things I liked a lot was the waves. Um, yeah. I, I had a great sense of motion, especially like when my enemy boss was firing off his Kraken huge tidal wave came my way, my ship went practically vertical, yet yeah. I, I avoided any sense of nausea. What, tri yeah. what tricks are you pulling off to, to keep me from experiencing that? Absolutely. So we, we're building what we're calling the Intelligent Vehicle System. Uh, this involves a few subsystems, uh, such as immersive physics, which is what we're doing where we're actually um, limiting the axes of movement for the ship, so it's only pitching and yawing, you're not going to be rolling. It's keeping you vertical as it does different yaws and pitches, so you're not you know, getting thrown about with the ship. Um, there's also a few different smoothing algorithms we do for when you're turning or when you're getting hit or if you're getting lifted up in the air to make it as, as comfortable an experience as possible and as nausea-free as possible. Cool. Is there any sense of persistence or is every time I launch the game, I'm starting from the same ship and I build it up from there? Um, so there's match-based and profile-based progression. Um, so when you play the campaign at home, you're going to be able to stop, leave, come back, and pick up where you left off and play through the whole campaign. In the other modes, those are more match-based progression where you're playing with other players, either with or against. Um, if it's PvE or PvP, um, we, we restrict it mostly to match-based. Match so by the end of that match, you could have a really epic ship with a ton of upgrades and a bunch of weapons. Very cool. I can't wait to play more. I really enjoyed my time today. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. It was awesome having you here. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. I'm looking forward to Battle Wake. Yeah. I, I, it, the trailer looks so good. I look fun. I've always, I, and I'm curious, like, how do you do a seafaring VR game and avoid nausea? Right. Like those waves, that's sort of like a, that, that N64 uh, wave race or whatever that was, mm -hmm. where, where like the waves, the physics of the ocean are almost a character. They become part of the, the, the movement of, of, your, of yourself in the game. In VR, that's a dangerous territory because right. you don't want to cause any kind of motion sickness and what's better for that than the ocean. <laughs> right, so as the horizon line is changing, right. how do you steady your you? Yeah. And it turns out it's the ship itself. The ship is almost, the entirety of the ship as it lays before you is the cockpit. It does sort of act as a cockpit in that sense, but it does go up and down with the waves. They do a great thing where they keep the horizon of the headset steady. Mm. So you don't ever yaw or uh, you know do this kind of roll. Uh, so they're very smart about that. Um, but thankfully, they still give you a great sense of motion. Like when the tidal wave comes towards you, like your ship does this, and you end up looking up there just naturally because that's where your ship went, and it comes crashing back down. It's a lot of fun. It's and those very arcadey. It is def this is definitely an arcade game, and I, I'll be very curious to see what the campaign is because I didn't get as good sense of that. But it's going to be a fun deathmatch game. There's a good skill, uh, you know, curve. The 
Emergency brakes are super handy where you just grab this and you start to skid around. It's good for avoiding, uh, you know, any kind of mountain or other ship. Maybe you want to do it to hit another ship. Uh, but the power-ups are also fun. So you're constantly shooting all of your weapons, but then you build up your ability to throw out, you know, a big tentacle or a con control a, a kraken or that kind of thing. It's, it almost seems design-wise counterintuitive what people expected from a pirate ship game. Yeah. You know, play, people playing Sea of Thieves wanted that in VR, wanted you to treat that like a ship where you could teleport and run around and activate them things. Here, you're never moving. Everything is right around you, mm -hmm. from the wheel to the brakes to firing. So it's almost like you're in power wheels. Like you're, the, the ship is smaller in scale to you because you are the ship. Right, yeah. And it's fun. Like you don't have to grab the wheel in order to make it go. You, you just get this sense of how things work. And it becomes very, like it would benefit from being on Quest, I will say. Like you'll do a lot of spinning around because mm. you can fire off the, the stern uh, just as often as off the bow. In any case, if it comes to Quest, wonderful. If not, uh, it's still going to be a fun game to play. And I look forward to playing the full game uh, whenever it comes out, hopefully later this year. Yeah, a lot of new hardware, a lot of new software games experiences. Uh, we'll have more of those to cover in future episodes. But thank you for watching this week, and we'll see you next time. Bye.